April 14th, Chad Robichaux. Success isn't final, failure's not fatal. What counts is the guts to keep going. Chad Robichaux, the golden boy, force recon Marine, sat in a dark closet with his gun, and he could only think of one way out. Eight tours in Afghanistan had trashed his life. Chad thought about all the evil he had seen day after day, what one man could do to another, what hatred can do to a culture, and what the constant violence had done to him. Chad couldn't make sense of it, couldn't process it, couldn't live with it. He had gone to Afghanistan to do something right, so how could he come back so filled with evil? He couldn't be the man full of pain and hate in Afghanistan and then come home to his family and suddenly be someone different. The man who had come home said he did hateful things and he didn't care that he said he did hateful things. Here, in the dark, in the closet, alone with his gun, Chad wondered why he didn't care. At the end of his last tour of duty, he had lost control and his life crashed down around him. Repeatedly, he felt numb in his face, hands, and feet. He felt like his airway was swelling shut and he had full-blown panic attacks. He couldn't remember things. I was a runaway train looking for a place to crash, Chad said. Chad morphed from the really ugly person Afghanistan had made him to a weak and broken man. He was removed from recon and it was like going from the star player to being kicked out of the game. They sent him home to face the new enemy, PTSD. Chad's pride was shattered. Being sent home left a big void in his life that he had to fill. He thought mastering mixed martial arts was the answer, and for a while it worked. It didn't give him time to think about Afghanistan. He became a world champion, but it wasn't the cure. Chad's failure to deal with the issues that brought on PTSD resulted in separating from his wife, Kathy, selling their home and planning for divorce. Their children were devastated. While he sat in the closet thinking of how he could take his life and make it look like an accident to spare his children, Kathy turned to her relationship with God. She prayed for God to let her see Chad the way he did, to help her forgive him as God forgave him. And God answered that prayer. Holding divorce papers, Kathy knocked on the closet door. When Chad opened it, she asked him, how could you do all the things you have done in the military, in Afghanistan, and as an MMA fighter, and never quit? But when it came to your family, you quit. Chad had never been called a quitter, but she was right. He had quit being a husband and a father. PTSD had stranded him on the edge of a cliff, and he was the one responsible. At that moment, Chad decided he wanted to live again. There was a fight to win, and it was the biggest of his life. My wife had fought for me when I was weak, and now it was my turn to fight for her. When Chad submitted his life to Christ and walked in relationship with him, he discovered that PTSD no longer controlled his life. Now, Chad and Kathy help veterans and their families get victory over PTSD through their ministry, the Mighty Oaks Warrior Program. They share their story of hope to end the tragedy of 22 veterans committing suicide every day and the failure of 80% of marriages in the military. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Are you trying to survive on your own? Success isn't final, failure's not fatal. What counts is the guts to keep going. Hello, men, my name is Blake Maddox. I'm a husband, a father of two sons, and a papa to two granddaughters. Today is April 14th, and our story is Chad Robichaux. When I'm listening to this story today, I'm trying to think about men who may be facing something very similar to what Chad was facing. He was sitting in a closet with a gun in his hand, thinking that there was no way out, that there was no answer to the hopelessness that he was experiencing and facing. And fortunately, this story has a good outcome. But my challenge today, men, is 
Are you at that place? And if you're at that place, there is an answer to your hopelessness. And the answer to your hopelessness is Jesus Christ and his love for you. You may be facing a battle that you need to win today. And you feel like you're at wit's end and you feel like there's no way out. Chad was at that place. And he cried out to God and when he cried out to God, God met him where he was at. So my challenge for us today is, man, wherever you find yourself today, if you find yourself hopeless, if you find yourself experiencing pain or loss, cry out to God. Jesus will meet you right where you're at. He is the answer to your hopelessness. Father, I pray for every person listening today that you would minister to broken and hopeless hearts in Jesus' name.